I understand the situation around Kazuya's intervention, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like this old one's plans were stopped and the whole thing was neatly resolved. I'm not really seeing the reason why we were called here and what could be putting our own world in jeopardy. That would be true if the old one had decided to quietly give up. But it was too late to bring everything to such a neat conclusion. Let's go back a bit. Let's talk about the reason why Avedon is here. The reason why all of your worlds are in danger. The True Mercy timeline I intervened in became the official timeline. I believe that the world was stable for the time being. But unfortunately, the isolated genocide timeline and the official one had a connection I was utterly unable to sever. A connection you couldn't sever? You, Kazuyakun. You, who had been possessed by the old one. Though it was always in an incomplete manner, the old one had used your body to successfully manifest in a number of times in that world line. That's what it was focused on. Just as you used your spirit to link with the demons in my room, the assimilated old one used that same process to connect to you. But it didn't really have rights to access intervention, and it didn't have enough influence on you. Trying to meddle from its isolated timeline didn't amount to much. Its power was restricted to whispering to your spirit, trying to shake your beliefs and induce you down a path different from what the original timeline, from that of the official timeline. But that didn't have much of an effect in reality. Kazuyakun's got a pretty strong personality, so it's no wonder that sort of thing wasn't enough to shake him. After a while trying this, the old one changed its target and went after the intervener. What? If you step back and look at the bigger picture, there's a minuscule but a present threat of it using Kazuyakun's body to manifest, but that's never been the real problem. The problem is that it remains latent in his mind able to call out to anyone listening. Knowing that I could not take control of Kazuken's body, it started calling out to the intervener to play a part in the genocide it wished to bring about. Curiosity at what might happen, the urge to inflict pain on others, hatred of demons and demon kind, the desire for views on, a, on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, I'm guilty of the last one. <laughs> but hey, if other people seeing me do it convinces them not to do it, then that's good enough. It used these thoughts and countless others to instigate, to tempt, to entice the interveners. And then the thing I feared the most happened. One by one... The interveners became its minions. The individuals were under the illusions that they were acting of their own will, but in reality, they were merely the old one's puppets. <laughs> I'm a puppet now, am I? The human called Kazuya is one person, but the interveners aren't necessarily all good people. I'm a good person. I had pretty good reasons for doing it. Plus, I know how this all turns out. It's fine. I didn't have to go through this guilt trip last time. We don't even know if they possess strong enough wills to resist the temptations to perform evil deeds. I'm so weak, I'm sorry, I repent, I throw myself at your mercy! <laughs> <laughs> it 
So at the moment, Avedon sees the initiative and we couldn't crush the possibility of divergence. It was far too late. Because they're so easily tempted into believing that their actions are righteous, relying on the good nature of humanity is dooming yourself to failure. I never said that what I was doing was right. I just said that I had reason enough for doing it. <laughs> Once the old one had accumulated enough lackeys, it then began to indiscriminately meddle in the official timeline that I had jurisdiction over. But like I said before, this kind of approach from an isolated timeline doesn't amount to much. It didn't even seem that interested in directly interfering with the official timeline. From the outset, it shifted its attention to the stabilization of that parallel world. Stabilization of that parallel world? You mean the world that originally branched off before Hyaki's intervention? Correct. The old one first attempted the cause of paradox from that point, much in the same way you collapse castle walls by undermining them from below one by one. In one particular world, it alerted the harpy spawn in the middle of their breeding season to the presence of Mother Rabbit, inducing them to attack her, causing severe injury as a result. She had the idea that love alone is not enough to save others ruthlessly beaten into her by the harpy spawn queen. Eventually, the anguish would cause a degeneration of her nature. Ugh. Front facing mother rabbit. Ugh. She would then become black rabbit. And from that point forward, all possibility of her and Kazuya Ken understanding one another would be lost forever. This change meant that the conditions for achieving true mercy were ruined at their very foundations. But that didn't come to pass in the end. You defeated the Harpy Spawn Queen and saved Mother Rabbit together with the human girl she had been protecting. And yet in our world, it contacted a Demon King harboring a grudge against you, infusing her with a small amount of intervention power. It used her in the hopes that you would go along with what was happening so it could win you over directly. Fortunately, I'd already put a stopper in the whole thing, and his plan ultimately ended in failure. The fact that you're so perceptive really helped. Regardless of whether or not I gave you any choice, if you'd let yourself get carried away by emotion and misunderstood the situation, you would have played right into its hands. And in yet another world, it deliberately connected a portal to the fairy realm to one in the park, hoping it would induce the fairies to come out and duck to surviving humans. At first this was done in minor, unrelated world lines, but eventually extended to worlds that had a connection to Kazukin, and even Sphinx was strong arms into getting involved. I was getting increasingly worried at this stage. It was a small scale and hadn't reached the point where it was a major concern. But if it continued like this, it might actually start causing changes in that official timeline. The source of the Old One's threat to the official timeline lies within you. That's why I thought to take your soul for myself. And the rest is history. I materialized in the form of the demon Cheshire and appeared before you. I tried to take your soul as a solitary demon and keep it trapped within me forever. No one expects to have the intervention target they're in charge of reach this kind of singularity. It's like plugging a few small holes in a leaking dam just to have many more burst open on their own. I think doing that to you was short-sighted. It's like getting scared of a bug in a computer program so you forcibly cut the power to the whole PC. 
On top of that, going for that kind of approach ran the risk of causing certain emotions to well up within Gazikin, and also attracted the attention of Abaddon. You're completely right. I didn't think so many of the interveners had double-crossed us to be its pawns, and it actually made the situation even worse. I mean, are there that many that did it? I think that if if you could say that each of the ones that went down the general route are now the pawns of old one, you, can't you say that the each of the ones that went down true mercy on your side? Come on, it's tit for tat, isn't it? <laughs> There's definitely more that do true mercy than genocide. Abaddon had detected me manifesting as the intervention meal and decided to change its target to me. The plan was to consume me and fuse with my intervention abilities. Doing so would provide Abaddon with the authority to intervene with the official timeline, True Mercy. From there, he can make wholesale changes as he pleased. Hold on, hold on. Don't just breeze over that. Make wholesale changes? The stakes suddenly got a whole lot bigger. That's what we've been saying. Even worse is that Mad Hatter, the intervention meme, is different than the half-baked one Abaddon has. Both our worlds and all the worlds our guests are from would all become intervention targets for him without having any kind of limitation. That's on top of Abaddon's original characteristics. The ability to devour worlds. I see. None of us can ignore the existence of a being that can cross any world and tear it into pieces. It gets worse. Abaddon gaining the power to eat any world of his choosing would cause yet another problem. The Manifestation of Old One. Wh what do you mean? As I said before, the Old One doesn't have a true name or form. It's a being that's closer to a liquid. Because of that, it relies on using Abaddon as an intermediary to exercise its power. That's why it wants to use your body for it to materialize in the official timeline, establish its own existence. How much you already know, yes? But that's just a preliminary step. Materializing itself in the real world is not the old one's final objective. Well, that much I could guess. If your plan were to conquer the world, why would you enlist the service of a demon that devours them? So does that mean its objective is to establish its own existence? And here is where we get the problem for you all. The broken pieces of the world's Abaddon devours end up in his stomach, fusing together and accumulating. Now, should a crazy number of worlds get all mixed and fused together in a senseless degree, what do you think would happen inside Abaddon's stomach? He'll get a stomach ache! Oh, yummy chan Abaddon would be a real idiot if that were the case. Wrong answer! Wrong answer, huh? That's what I thought, too. You just got stuck, eh? What's the big deal? And, uh, get some antiacid. You'll be fine. <laughs> the answer is become nothing. Infinite matter is equivalent to infinite nothingness. Though matter and nothingness seem to be opposites, they are in fact the same. A lawlessness of chaos and disorder. In other words, a world in which there is no meaning. A world in which names and forms equally mean nothing. That world of nothingness is precisely what the old one is trying to achieve. Are you saying that it wants to create a world where those things aren't needed because it's lacking them itself? What kind of insane logic is that? Yes, it is insane. 
That's why I first plan on using Kazuka in the leisurely advances plans. The same goes for the Kazuka who came to our world. They apparently plan on using a version of Kazuka lost in our world to steadily devour our own world. But it hugely accelerated its plans. If we had only had Mad Hatter's intervention powers, we wouldn't have had to turn Kazuka into a medium. And so the Mad Hatter concealed himself in this place, and called us all here to this tea party in order to help deal with Abaddon. To be honest, I don't have the faintest idea of how fighting someone who can open up holes in space time like that. Is there some kind of countermeasure? Well, you're going to have to learn, uh, uh, Luca, because the powers we get so far in Paradox are absolutely insane. The powers that we're going to have to face against are going to be have to be even more insane. <laughs> yes, of course. That's exactly why I called you and Marion here. The preparations were supposed to be made by the late arriving helper. I was going to give you the details when they arrived. I have a question. I understand those holes in reality we saw are the work of Avalon as he devours worlds. So if we have some kind of countermeasure against Avalon, can we stop worlds from collapsing? Not just a stopgap measure as a full and proper resolution. I know what you want to hear. You're looking for commonalities between this and what's happening in your own world. But unfortunately, the nature of the collapse caused by Abaddon and what's happening in your world is different, both in terms of the root cause and how to deal with them. But it's true there is a lot of overlap among which is one thing called Chaos Collapse. The Chaos Collapse he causes in the worlds he devours sets in motion the collapse of the world and on itself. From there the world disappears. What once should exist does no longer. As for what that collapse looks like firsthand, Lukakun has witnessed that himself once before. Yes, in the third Tartarus Rift, at the end of Part 1 of Paradox. So, so that really was one of those Chaos Collapse events. Calm yourself. As I said, though the end result is the same, the nature of one caused by Paradox is completely different. And I don't even know a way to completely restore a world back to no normal after a chaos collapse caused by Abaddon, let alone a paradox. I'm sure I can't be more... I'm sorry I can't be of more help. But Mizuki was told that uh, her world could be restored to normal if the situation were to be completely resolved. And now you're saying you can't even fix our world? My authority to return worlds to normal only extends to undoing the damage caused that Abaddon has caused. I'm afraid your world is out of scope. So that's how it is, huh? This hasn't turned out to be a very good story. Does that authority of yours to undo Abaddon's damage extend to undoing those genocide timelines? That would let the girls in my room as well as Yaki painlessly resolve things with me. You should at the very least be able to quash the possibility of it happening. You're a kind one, Kazuken. I wish I could do that. If it were something caused by Abaddon, then I might have been able to help. But those were paths chosen by none other than the interveners who became pawns. Also, you seem to be misunderstanding something. The one who suffered the most in, the, in those worlds was not them, but you. I see. It appears everyone finished the tea I put out. Why don't we change locations and continue our conversations there? 
A little late for that. They're so little, it was practically gone the moment we took our seats. You're eating the plate. I'll continue my explanation as I show you what kind of world the old one has started building through its interventions. Now everyone, please close your eyes for a short moment. Our power can only activate if everyone's eyes are closed. And whoosh, we're gone. 